Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And congratulations, you are just about done with Pocket Droids Go. Really, from here on out, it's on you. We've got one little thing that I want to fix real quick, and then we're going to talk about some student challenges that we want to issue to you to finish out this game and really reinforce a lot of what we've learned throughout this section. So the thing that we want to change is if we go to our capture scene, you may have noticed that if we fail to capture the droid, it just kind of sits there forever. That was a bit of an oversight. So let's go into the capture scene manager and handle that. Double click the capture scene manager to open it in your IDE. And we're going to go all the way down to the orb destroyed function. Right now, we've got a status of capture scene status dot failed. What we also want to do here is make the same kind of call that we're making down in droid collision, but we're going to wait just a little bit on that. In fact, we want to wait on both of them for just a minute. So let's go create a private function down here at the bottom. And we're just going to call it private void move to world scene. And I'm going to take this scene transition manager dot instance dot go to scene call. And I'm going to cut it and paste it. And where it was before in the droid collision, I'm going to say invoke and I'm going to put in the method name, so move to world scene. And then I'm going to give it a good healthy break of 2.0f, so two seconds. And I'm going to copy that call. And up here in orb destroyed, I'm going to make the exact same call. Now let's save it and let's go take a look back in Unity and see how that looks for us. Let's press play. And I'm going to intentionally miss three times. So there's a miss. And dropped it again. Cool. And now we're back in our main scene, in the world scene. I'm going to drag one of these bots over. I can actually grab the droid object and not part of the body. And there we go. We're moving in both cases now. So let's stop running. One other thing that I want to mention is I'm going to switch back to the world scene. You may have noticed when we were doing our work with the save and load that there was an error that popped up saying that it couldn't deserialize a certain object. It was the list of droid data objects. If you see that, don't worry about it too much. Just go do something to resave the player data because when you add that field, when we added that in, it messed up the serialization and it couldn't read the save file properly. That's one of the drawbacks of the way that we went about implementing the data, implementing the save and load. But there were other pros that made me decide to go with that method for our current use case. Now let's talk a little bit about what we can do to really wrap this up and improve it. There are some challenges that I want to issue to you to go and improve Pocket Droids Go and customize it for yourself and make it your own game, make it a portfolio piece. First, we mentioned wanting to keep the droids on the map. As in, when we move from the world scene to the capture scene and then back to the world scene, keeping them in the same spot. We've taught you the principles of what you need to know to make that happen. And I think it would be a good stretch goal for you to implement that yourself and keep the droids position and reload them where they should be when the world scene loads. Next is it's really easy for users to, in a way, hack the game at the moment. They could shut down the game and reload it by an XP source and just gain XP for days. We want to stop that because that's not intended behavior. So 
the next goal is you should implement some functionality where you can store the location of an XP bonus and have some kind of timer or way to prevent the player from gathering that for a certain amount of time. The third challenge is more of a mandatory one um, if you really want this game to be functioning well. Right now, we have a static demo droid that loads up in our capture scene. We want to swap that out with the droid that is passed through our scene transition manager. So when the transition manager goes through and moves that droid to the next scene, grab that and put it where that tester droid currently is and take the tester droid out of the scene entirely. Fourth, right now, as you may have noticed, the success screen shows if the ball hits the droid, whether it's meant to or not. So say the ball hits the ground. On the override orbs side of things, it doesn't play the sound. Well, we also want to make sure that the collider doesn't go off, or at the very least, the success screen doesn't show if the ball has hit the ground or another object before hitting the droid. The last challenge is to go back to Mapbox Studio, that super awesome tool that we played with at the beginning of this section. And I think it would be really cool to create a night map, so kind of a nighttime theme for your game. And depending on the time of day, in the user's current device, switch out for that theme. This will help you get more familiar with Mapbox's abstract map class. And it's a great, a great example of how we can manipulate the map at runtime to give us a better look and feel and a better user experience. So go out, give those five things a shot and see what you can do. I'm excited to see what you come up with. Again, congratulations on getting through Pocket Droids Go and doing all of this amazing work to get a really awesome showpiece for your portfolio and a starter project for your very own location-based game with Mapbox and their Unity SDK. You've done an amazing job and your game's looking great. This is Ben with devslopes.com and we'll see you next time.